I'm pretty sure that you don't know this tool. You see, hard ops and box cutter is like a jungle. There is uh, quite a few things that you may understand on the basic level, you know, like, okay, jungle is full of trees and animals. But if you want to get deep into the jungle, you understand how crazily diverse this place is. So hard ops has this amazing tool, a kind of a feature that allows you to use dots to control different things. So watch this. Normally when you're going to be adding bevel with hard ops, you will press Q at the bevel, you know, then alt click on sharpen to add weighted normals. And if you want to adjust the bevel width, you would go to Q menu and bevel and adjust the bevel. And most of the times when I work using hard ops and box cutter, I'm in box cutter mode because I can access my D menu to access all the cutters and I can also access Q menu, which is a hard ops menu. But in order to use dots, you have to be in hard ops mode. So you need to switch with Alt W to hard ops mode and you'll see there's going to be a new bar. Now, by default, when you have hard ops driven modifier running on your mesh, you can hold control and you're going to see dots. And these dots denote that you can control uh, whatever it's on your mesh using your mouse. So for example, if I hover closely here, you see that the dot highlights and says bevel. So if I click this and drag it, I can actually adjust my bevel and change its width really quickly. So I don't have to go to Q menu and click on bevel to adjust it. Now, obviously, if you want to have more options, you want to go here and press H to unroll the H menu because, you know, bevels have a lot of options like Z to see the wireframe, etc., etc. So there's a lot you can do, you know, with bevels using hard ops. But if you just want to adjust the width, go to hard ops mode and hold control and adjust it. Now, it doesn't work just for bevels. It works for all kinds of things. So, for example, if I had a plane and let's say edit solidification modifier, right, I can do the same thing. So now if I had solidification and bevel, I'm going to have two dots. So watch bevel, right? And then I have two dots, one for solidify, one for bevel. Now this brings us to a subject of smart objects, which are up here. And these can be created and controlled and changed by using these dots. So for example, if I add just regular plane, I can hold control and adjust, you know, different things on my plane. I can also add a cube and do the same thing. And by the way, these are all driven by screws. So they start with a vert. It's a very clever stack of modifiers, which by the way, shows you how powerful modifiers in Blender can be. But then you can get to more interesting stuff, like for example, this. And if I collapse all the modifiers, in fact, you know, let me just install an extension and it's just a small tip for you. This extension is called um, Modify Tools and it's going to allow us to collapse stuff with one click. It's going to pop on the top here. There you go. See, so now we can collapse them with one click. And that's what's, you know, creating the cube, right? It's a lot of stuff. So if I hold control, I can see that I can change all kinds of things. Solidification, so I can change the size of the cube, right? Width of it and, you know, all kinds of stuff, including chamfer, you know, bevel, and so on and so forth. And you can go back to box cutter. So, you know, I'll W D and you can start cutting it just like in the, you know, at the other mesh at some way that normals and keep modeling. So, you know, that's how you use it. Now this goes deeper because you not only have smart shapes, like for example, screw this one is awesome, right? Like a spring. So you can, you know, change the, the height, you know, change the, uh, change the, the width, you know, change the diameter. It's pretty cool when you want to move something. If you combine this with machine tools thread, which is brilliant, right? You just have to enable it in, um, in options under uh, machine tools in preferences, but you have something called thread. So if I select this one, for instance, and right click and machine tools and thread, I'm going to get thread. So if you combine this one with the, you know, hard ops, uh, hard ops tool for creating the springs you can create in all kinds of gears and mechanisms in just seconds right but anyway what i want to show you is i want to show another really cool smart modifier here right there's quite a lot of them in here right They're all smart modifiers right but one they i use quite a lot is the deform so let's just rotate it on x by 90 apply rotation you want to do that to be able to 
help Hardobs uh, pick the right axis to deform it on. Let's just subdivide it because we need to subdivide it a few times to make it, you know, shade nicely. And then we can just go with Hardobs deform. And then you can decide what you want to do with it. Taper, bend, twist, you know, or stretch like twist, for example, could be fantastic for creating um, rotary blades for, for engines, you know, like propellers, right? So you can, you know, grab this dot here and you can adjust the, the depth of this twist or the strength of it. With a bend, you can, you know, bend a piece of geometry like that. And this is a really cool way of working. And if you add to it, for example, curves, because you can actually also run things on curves. So if I'm going to add a curve here. So let's go to, where is it? Curves. And let's go with Bezier, right? And we're going to rotate it. And I'm going to make it slightly larger, right? and apply rotation and then select this one shift select this one and click on a curve it's going to um you know bend it along the curve so now i have this bent modifier which i can still adjust right but it's also been aligned to the curve so i can still adjust the bend right but i can also array this along the curve right so i could you know array this along the curve now i would need to drop this array before the curve right so i need to drop it in here to align it and probably change the axis to something like x or hang on a second let me just see yeah see that the array works better when you do it beforehand so watch this um let me just uh, undo this curve for a second right let me let me array this so you can array this going up like this right and then shift click on the curve and boom and you see now it's going to work out perfectly so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this and if you combine all these tools together you know this that's just a lot of fun you can now offset this using dots and all kinds of crazy shit so anyway, play with these, they're brilliant. Um, it's like I said, there's so much stuff in Hardups and Box Cutter, it's mind boggling. This is why we developed the course, the ultimate guide to Hardups and Box Cutter. And let me tell you, this course is 22 hours long. And I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to tell you that there's so much shit in these add-ons. There's no fucking way you're using them to a full potential. And if you, it's and it's not about you know using all these tools, right? It's about picking the tools that you want to use for your personal workflow but in order to do that you need to know what tools you know are included so this course will show you all the main tools that i'm using my personal workflow which been you know developed over six years of me working with these add-ons every day producing 40 courses and close to 1000 videos on youtube so i really know them inside out then is the full modeling workflow in which you're going to be modeling a cool sci-fi truck but also there's an advanced section on all these crazy you know advanced tools and settings like for example box cutter has a whole massive menu that no one knows about and there's so many options in here and some of them are really useful right so if you want to create some really personalized workflow for your very specific type of work that you're doing that course is phenomenal and these add-ons will help you to shrink the time required for for modeling for hard surface by eight times which is crazy and you can use them not just for end gun workflow you can also use them for subdivision workflow i'm using them in our sub d course and they just brilliant because they you know cut so much fluff out of the nonsense uh, that vanilla blender is forcing you to and gonna save you a ton of time so anyway grab the course if you're interested it's called the ultimate guide to hard ups and box cutter 2.0 it's on our website the link is in the video description and in a comment pinned under the video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one